Hello and welcome. I've gone to the daily news analysis of 19th of November 2023. So, as the important article, Bara articles hai. one by one. Dekhte hai. Tamil Nadu reenacts bills denied assent by Governor Ravi. Then, Kadalundi is shrinking. Mod flood ecosystem keeps birds away. Then, Quad CECA on top of agenda for India Australia 2 plus 2 dialogue. Finding sustainable fuel sources a top priority, says Murmu. Then modest start to big strides. Space program turns 60. Maldives request to India to withdraw military persons. Then AI powered chemist makes oxygen from Martian meteorites. Why has China Pakistan corridor stalled? Then why are the people fleeing Myanmar for Mizoram? Limited peace, unlimited tension. Then Dell, HP, Foxconn get Foxconn get nod under IT hardware PLI 2.0. Then former RBI governor S. Venkata Ramanan passes away at 92. The first article is Tamil Nadu reenacts bills denied assent by Governor Ravi. The Tamil Nadu Assembly on Saturday in a special session again passed 10 bills for which Governor R.N. Ravi had earlier with, withheld accent. Earlier, the Assembly adopted a resolution moved by Chief Minister M.K. Stalin to reconsider and pass the bill. The main opposition AIDMK and the BJP stuck a walk talk and were not in the House when the resolution was taken up for voting. Of the 10 bills, two were passed by the 15th Assembly during the AIDMK regime and eight were under the current Assembly and immediate sent to the Governor for his assent. Most of the bills which failed to get the Governor's assent are related to amendments in the laws of universities to empower the state government instead of the Governor, who is the Chancellor to appoint Vice-Chancellor. The governor has kept the bill for a long time and on November 13, 2023, without giving reasons, returned the bill mentioning I withheld, I withhold assent. The assembly feels that withholding assent and returning them without, without giving reasons is not accept, acceptable, said the chief minister in the constitution. Article 200 of the constitution says the governor is bound to give assent when a bill returned by the governor for reconsideration is adopted again by the assembly. The chief minister said the bill could, could be reconsidered under rule 143 of the Tamil Nadu assembly as per rule 143. When a bill which, which has been passed by the assembly is returned by the governor to the assembly for reconsideration, the point or points referred for reconsideration or amendments recommended by the governor shall be put before the assembly by the speaker and shall be discussed and voted upon in the same manner as amendments to a bill or in such other manner as the speaker may consider most probable convenient for their consideration by the assembly. The bill passed during the AIDMK regime and moved again on Saturday are the Tamil Nadu Fisheries University's Amendment Bill 2020, LA Bill No. 2 of 2020 and the Tamil Nadu Veterinary and Animals, Animal Science University Amendment Bill 2020. They were moved by Onitha R. Radha Krishnan, Minister for Fisheries, Fisherman Welfare and Animal Husbandry, Higher Education Minister K. Ponmudi moved the Tamil Nadu University's Law Amendment Bill 2022, LA Bill No. 24 of 2022, and Tamil Nadu University's Law Second Amendment Bill 2022, again for reconsideration, Agriculture and Farmers Welfare Minister M. R. K. Ponir Selvam moved a phrase the Tamil Nadu Agriculture University Amendment Bill 2022, LA Bill No. 40 of the 2022.
लॉ मिनिस्टर आर रघुपति मूव्ड द तमिलनाडु डॉक्टर अंबेडकर लॉ यूनिवर्सिटी अमेंडमेंट बिल 2022 एल बिल नंबर 29 ऑफ 2022 फॉर रिकंसिडरेशन ऑफ ऑफ द हाउस द तमिलनाडु यूनिवर्सिटी सेकंड अमेंडमेंट बिल 2022 एल बिल नंबर 55 ऑफ 2022 वाज रीइंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय तमिलनाडु डेवलपमेंट इंफॉर्मेशन एंड पब्लिसिटी मिनिस्टर एम टी तमिलनाथन द तमिलनाडु फिशरीज यूनिवर्सिटी अमेंडमेंट बिल 2023 एल बिल नंबर 15 ऑफ 2023 एंड तमिलनाडु वेटरनरी एंड एनिमल साइंसेस यूनिवर्सिटी अमेंडमेंट बिल 2023 एल बिल नंबर 18 ऑफ 2023 वेयर इंट्रोड्यूस्ड बाय द बाय मिस्टर अनिता राधाकृष्णन हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर मिनिस्टर एम ए सुब्रमण्यम री इंट्रोड्यूस द तमिलनाडु डी डॉक्टर एम जी आर मेडिकल यूनिवर्सिटी चेन्नई अमेंडमेंट बिल 2022 ट्वेंटी टू एल ए बिल नंबर थर्टी नाइन ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू देन नेक्स्ट है कडालुंडिस श्रिंकिंग मोड फ्लैट इको सिस्टम कीप बार्ड्स एवे कडालुंडिया विलेज ऑन द साउथ साउथ वेस्ट कोस्ट इन कुचिकोड डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑफ केरला हैड अबाउट 8 हेक्टर्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिएंट रिच इंटरटाइडल मड फ्लड्स इन द अर्ली 2020s टुडे द एक्सपेंस ऑफ मड फ्लड्स इन द एस्टुरी ऑफ द कडालुंडी पूजा रिवर हैज रिड्यूस्ड टू अबाउट 1 हेक्टर दिस टू इज ग्रेजुअली बीइंग कवर्ड विद सैंड डिप्राइविंग प्रे टू थाउजेंड्स ऑफ शोर बर्ड्स That migrated from colder climb, colder climbs in winter to the village. Researchers point out point out that if the mud flats are not protected and restored, Kadalundi will finish vanish from the global map as a prominent destination of migrant shorebirds in a few years. It is the abundance abundance of prey such as polycatchet and Prostaceans in the mud flood that attract a wide variety of migrant shore birds to Kadalundi from places such as Siberia, Ladakh, Mongolia, and Scotland. We have tried to convince the government through memorandums of the importance of pro- protecting the mud flood ecosystem of Kadalundi from other invasive elements such as sandbanks and mangroves but the response has been passive said tr athira city safi sifa and k jisnu who has who have been studying the ecological changes taking place in the village for the past several years the mangrove threat <clears throat> however efforts are on to popularize ecosystem in the kadalundi bhalikunnu community reserve kbcr by widening the expanse of mangrove the 154 hectare KBCR had less than 50 hectares of mangroves until a few years ago, but these trees that thrive in stall in salt water have <coughs> proliferated so fast that they currently occupy more than 60 hectares. We are planting four more new species of mangroves as part of the strengthening ecosystem ecotourism in Kadalundi, said P. Sivadarshan, KBCR Management Committee chairperson. The sedimentation of sand and sand on mud flats not only brings down the amount of amount of prey there, but also helps mangroves easily proliferate. The viviparous mangroves of Kodalundi, according to researchers, have been displaying an aggressively invasive behavior. Kodalundi's ecosystem keeps shore birds away. The mangroves lobby has been raising carbon sequestration. Sequestration is the key environmental factor for its promotion, but people often underestimate the significance of soil and mud in carbon sequestration. Soil contains nearly twice the amount of carbon compared to combination of the atmosphere, vegetation, and animals. Said Ms. Said Mrs. Athira. <coughs> Holistic approach studies, however, shows that wetland and grasslands have capacity to sequester more carbon than many types of forests. Haphazard. Replanting without proper understanding is never advisable. It is crucial to adopt a holistic approach that prioritizes the protection of intact ecosystem and focuses on restoring the functionality of a regarded of a degraded ecosystem. She said.
prefer mud flats. The mangroves of Catalonia never attract shore birds coming from colder regions. They prefer open mud flats where they are safe from predators. When I started my research in 2005, <coughs> we used to see large congregations of migrant species such as lesser and lesser sand plover, greater sand plover, common sandpiper, whimbrel, Eurasian, curly, common red shank, common green shank, Kentish plover, Terek sandpiper, Donlin and Sanderling foraging voraciously during the during low tide but now they the prey depletion because of sandbanks and mangrove polarifications is forcing them to stay away from the mudflats, said Mr. Arif. The migrant by migrant birds with great sight fidelity are now finding an alternative on the beaches of neighboring coasts. Then next article is Quad CECA on top of agenda for India Australia 2 plus 2 dialogue. India and Australia are set to hold the second 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue on Monday, where the upcoming Quad summit is expected to figure prominently. While the sides will sides sides will also take stocks of stocks of the ongoing negotiation for comprehensive ecosystem eco economic cooperation agreement CECA. The dialogue commonly shortly shortly. Sorry, the dialogue comes shortly after the India USA two plus two dialogue last week and will be. An opportunity to discuss regional development, including the crisis in West Asia. While Australian Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister Richard Mar Marles will travel to Delhi from Ahmedabad, where he will watch Sydney Sunday's Cricket World Cup final. Foreign Minister Penny Wong, Penny Wong will travel to Delhi to hold a number of meetings and attend cultural events. Apart from the 2 plus 2 dialogue on Monday, Mrs. Wong and External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar will hold the 14th Foreign Ministerial Framework Dialogue FMFD on Tuesday to take stock to take stock of cooperation under the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership and Exchange Views on regional and global issues of mutual interest. All eyes will be on whether there will be an announcement on the date for next Quad Summit to be held in India in 2024 while Australian and Japan Japanese government have informally convened to the External Affairs Minister Ministry that they would be able to attend the Quad Summit on January 27. New Delhi has been waiting for a Confirmation from U.S. President Joseph Biden, Biden's office, as he has, as he had been invited as a chief guest to the January 26 Republic Day parade. In addition, Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese's visit would be an opportunity to sign the India-Australian Comprehensive Economic Cooperation Agreement (CECA). In an interview to the Hindu the last month, Australian High Commissioner Philip Green said that both sides are looking to conclude negotiation for the free trade agreement. I am not going to make a prediction about when, but ob obviously it would be my preference to have CECA ready to be uh, ready before PM Albanese visit. Mr. Green said without committing to the date. During the 2 plus 2 dialogue previously held in 2021, the minister, ministers would cover bilateral, regional and global matters of mutual interest, the ministry said in a statement indicating there would be further discussion on israel Hamas war. Mr. Modi and Mr. Modi had strongly condemned civilian death in remarks at the Voice of Global South Summit on Friday. Bilateral cooperation. While officials refused <coughs> To comment further on the case, Mr. Jaisankar is also likely to take up an Australian court, court's order telling a former High Commissioner to pay his domestic staff more than a hundred thousand dollars. India had re rejected the order with the Ministry invoking the Vienna Convention that protects diplomats from such 
local rulings. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh and Mr. <coughs> Marls will also hold a bilateral after the 2 plus 2 dialogue. India and Australia are pursuing a comprehensive strategic partnership and visit of Minister Mar Marles is expected to give further impetus to the collaboration as well as bilateral defense cooperation, the defense ministry said in a statement. Our cooperation with India is at, at the heart of Australia's approach to ensuring the Indo-Pacific remains open, inclusive and resilient, Mr. Mar Marles said ahead of the visit there have been several first this year in bilateral defense cooperation, the maiden visit of an Indian Navy submarine to Australia, Canberra hosting Mal Malabar naval exercise and Indian Navy Donier and Air Force C-130 visiting Pocos Killing Island as reported by the Hindu earlier. The Australia-India relationship has never been more consequential. We are working together through our comprehensive strategic partnership as quad partners and beyond to promote a peaceful, stable and prosperous Indo-Pacific region. The Australian Defence Ministry said in a statement on Saturday, the 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue is a cornerstone of, the, of our relationship and an opportunity to progress our work together to save the type of region we want. It is stated, ministers will advance cooperation on our shared regional interest including in defense, security, renewable energy and technology, the statements added. The quad grouping comprising of India, Australia, Japan and US has announced several initiatives for the regional top among them, the Indo-Pacific Maritime Domain Awareness Initiative for the benefit of the entire region, sources said. The implementation of IPMDA will come up with come up for review at the highest level during the quad summit. The next step hiding sustainable fuel sources a top priority, says Finding non-fossil sustainable resources which could replace traditional fuel should be a priority of priority objective because we are approaching a climate tripling point. Tipping point, President Draupadi Murmu said on Saturday while addressing a conference organized by the Aeronautical Society of India AESI to commemorate its 75th anniversary. The President added that the, to reduce the carbon footprint, we need to rapidly adopt a new pro propulsion technology at a large scale, including electric, hydrogen and hybrid. The development of sustainable jet fuel is one of the much needed steps to decarbonize the economy, but it is hardest to achieve because traditional fuel are of very high density, the President said. Decarbonization of aero propulsion is an Ordinary task, task we will have to undertake because climate change is threatening the very existence of humans, she said. Aviation is a remarkable feat of human in integrity, sorry, ingenuity that brings the imaginative power to reality with seamless fusion of technology, Mrs. Murmu noted, aerospace and Aviation are almost superhuman activities that afford us to the vast global connection of the planet we, in, we inhabit and exploration of space and beyond, she said. Highest standards. <coughs> in this regard, the president said, whether it is the feat of successful completion of Mars missions or showcasing the end-to-end -end capability in safe landing and roving near the moon's south pole, a place considered beyond human endeavors, India has proved that it has willpower, potential and capacity to accomplish what it is set, our, set out to achieve. She added that the highest standard of quality, cost effectiveness and Punctuality have been the hallmarks of all the all of the Indian projects. G. Satish Reddy, former Secretary Depa Department of Defense and Defense R and D and former Chairman Defense Research and Development Organization DRDO and presently the President of AESI spoke of the AESI's role in synergizing. 
the efforts of all R&D organization, academia, and industry towards realization of advanced capabilities for making the country self-reliant. The today, the two-day conference plans to deliberate on the vision for aerospace and aviation in 2047. The and lay the roadmap. For realization of this vision, he said, air travel in India is no longer a luxury of the elite. Said Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh. Union Minister said, <coughs> independent charges, science and technology, and MOS in the Prime Minister's office. This has been possible not only due to affordable airfare, but also the number of air airports has more than doubled in the last over. Nine years from 75 in 2014 to over 150 today, he said while addressing the event. Dr. Singh said that India's totally indigenous maiden manned mission Gaganyan will be launched in 2025. The next a modest start to Greek Strides space program turns 60. On November 21, 1963, a 715 kg Nike Apache rocket showed from a small launch pad on the beach head at Thumba, a fishing village on the outskirts of Tirunanthapuram. It rose 208 km in the, in the sky and released a sodium vapor payload which bedded the twilight sky within, with an Orange Nebula. Sixty years ago, the launch set India a journey that saw two more milestones before the country become, became part of an elite international group. The first was the launch of India's first truly indigenous rocket on February 2020, 20, sorry, February 22, 1969, a pencil-sized vehicle in, in the words of Vasant. Varikar, later director of Vikrama Sarabhai Space Center BSC, BSSC that weighed around 10 kg. The second, second came on July 18, 1980 when its homegrown satellite launch vehicle 3, SLV-3 rocket weighing 70 tons played the 35 kg Rohini satellite in the orbit and India is just in a small group of countries that could launch their satellites into orbit using their own launch vehicles, the only other were the Soviet Union, the US and UK and France. When the Nike Apache rocket soared into the sky, the Kerala Assembly was in session and its member ran out to the to see the spectacles above. above. The sight also fascinated, fascinated thousands of people in the area. Some of them later said the moment captivated them enough to join the Indian Space Research Organization ISRO letter. The launch was an international effort under the United Nations. The rocket came from the US, the payload from France and the range clearance from the MI-4 helicopter from the Soviet Union. The rocket and payload engine engineers were Indians. The rocket was mated with the payloads in St. Mary Magdal Magdalene Church Thumba, which has been which had been taken over the government, the parish priests house became the mission control center. Vikram Sarabhai was present during the launch along with E. B. Chitnis P. D. Bhavsar, A. P. J. Abdul Kalam, and the French payload specialist Jacques Blamont. The SLB 3s led to the Argument, uh, sorry, uh, augmented satellite launch vehicle ASLV, the polar satellite vehicle PSLV, and the geostationary satellite launch vehicle GSLV. India also has a variety of sounding rockets to study the upper atmosphere. Of course, the ISRO has also had its share to of dis disappointments. Its first SLV. Three flight in 1979, its first two ASLV flights, the first PSLV mission and the and a few GSLV mission all failed. The agency had the agency has had trouble accepting the fate of these missions as such preference preferring to call them partial success instead to its credit. However, the ISRO eventually also vaulted to full success. Today India is an influential 
स्पेस फायरिंग नेशन ऑन जुलाई फोर्टीन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री लॉन्च व्हीकल मार्क थ्री एल एम बी सर एल बी एम थ्री वेइंग सिक्स फोर्टी टन रोज फ्रॉम द सेकंड लॉन्च पैड एट श्रीहरिकोटा एंड प्लेड द फोर टन चंद्रयान थ्री कंपोजिट मॉड्यूल इन टू एन आर्थ ऑर्बिट ऑन ऑगस्ट ट्वेंटी थ्री ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री चंद्रयान थ्री लैंडर विक्रम सॉफ्ट लैंडेड ऑन मोन मेकिंग ए मेकिंग ए डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ हिस्ट्री फॉर इंडिया इसरो चेयरमैन एस सोमनाथ कॉल्ड इट इज द बिगिनिंग ऑफ ए गोल्डन एरा ही ऑल्सो एड ही ऑल्सो टोल्ड द हिंदू दैट ही बिलीव्ड द एल बी एम थ्री लॉन्च टू हैव बीन द मोस्ट क्रुशियल एसेप्ट एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द मिशन द एल बी एम इज ए हाईली सोफिस्टिकेटेड मशीन एंड इट्स रूट्स गो बैक टू द नाइक एपाच लॉन्च सिक्सटी इयर्स एगो टूडे इट्स रॉकेट्स एलाउ इंडिया टू कन्सिव ऑफ सैटेलैट्स फॉर ए भेरिटी अफ आप्लिकेसन इनक्लूडिंग रिमोट सेन्सींग वेदर फोरकास्टिंग कम्युनिकेसन नेविगेसन सर्विलांस टेली एजुकेशन कार्टोग्राफी एंड प्रोस्पेक्टिंग मेराइन रिसोर्सेस इंडिया हैज ऑल्सो एम्बार्गड ऑन डीप स्पेस साइंस मिशन टू स्टडी द मोन मार्स सोन एंड डिस्टेंस स्टार्स The the result in the words of late S. Ram, Ramakrishnan, a rocket technology and former PSSC director, is that India has assured access to space. B. R. Guru Prasad, former ISRO scientist and a science writer, says 95 launch vehicle had lifted off from Srihariyota from 1979. The ISRO has put to into orbit 90. Indian satellite and deployed on orbit 431 satellites from 34 countries using its launch vehicle. Maldives request requests India to withdraw military persons. Hours after being sworn in, President Mohammad Muizu of the Maldives requested India to withdraw its military personnel from his country. Mr Moijo personally conveyed the message during a meeting with visiting minister of art sciences Kiran Rijiju who represented India at the swearing in ceremony at the capital mall on Friday at the meeting president moijo had formally requested government of india to withdraw its military personnel from the from the maldives the president noted that at the presidential election held in september the maldivian people had given him a strong mandate to make the request to india and expresses the hope that in india will honor the democratic will of the people of the maldives a press release from the president's office of the maldives announced mr moijo led progressive party of maldives won the september election by defeating president ibrahim mohammad soeb Solis Maldivian Democratic Party on Friday Mr Moizu said the stage for his message to India by announcing the country will not have any foreign military personnel in the Maldives Mr Moizu did not name India during his remarks but it was obvious that he was referring to the presence of indian personnel indian sources argued that the presence of on armed indian military personnel was meant for training of maldivian maldivian personnel for the maintenance of equipments for foreign dignitaries mr rijiju participated in friday's swearing in ceremony that saw a number of international delegates including some samantha power the administrator of the usaid hasan mohammad Information Minister of Bangladesh Party C R Scotland Secretary General of Commonwealth and Chinese President Special Envoy Chen Yikin During the stay in during the stay the Indian minister also visited the Exim Bank funded social housing unit project at Hull Homel Which is, which is one of the Indian largest Indian developmental project in the Maldives. AI powered chemist makes oxygen from Martian meteorites. <clears throat> oxygen producing material made from meteorites found on Mars have been produced using the robotic artificial intelligence chemist 
the researchers the research published in nature synthesis synthesis provides a proof of concept for generating oxygen and may have implement implications for future manned missions of mission to mars potential future manned mission to mars will require oxygen as it is essential to human activity on the planet being used in the rocket propellant and life support systems on the ways to make this potential mission most cost effective in the long term and less complex would be to use resources already present on the planet to create oxygen rather than transport material from earth recent evidence of water on mars and analysis of the elemental composition of meteorites found on the planet could provide an opportunity to make catalyst using martian resources Jun Jiang from the University of Science and Technology of China Hefei China and other developed a robotic AI chemist that is able to create a catalyst that can be used to produce oxygen from martian material without human interventions using a machine learning model derived from the both first principles data and experimental measurements this method automatically and rapidly identifies the optimal catalyst formulation for from more than 3 million possible compositions the authors write the author selected five different categories of meteorites meteorites that come from or have been confirmed to exist on mars which were analyzed by the robotic ai chemist the robotic A chemist was able to convert the meteorites into chemical compounds and make catalyst from these compounds before testing the catalyst oxygen product production performance. This process was repeated by the robot until the best catalyst had been had been found, which they suggest could be, could have taken 2,000 years of human labor. The author then showed that this catalyst could operate under simul simultis sorry. simulated martian condition the synthesized catalyst operates at a current density of 10 ma cm for over 5,50,000 seconds of operations with an over over potential of 455.1 mv demonstrating the feasibility of the artificial intelligence chemist in the automated synthesis of chemical and material for mars exploration they write The robotic AI chemist allows for the automated production of catalyst using martian meteorites which may lead to a way for humans to make oxygen on mars in the future the author concludes The next of why has the china pakistan corridor stalled seeking funds to the turn tune of 65 billion dollar via infrastructure investment pakistan caretaker prime minister anwar haq kakar on october 20 completed a five day trip to beijing he was also attempting to ally China's demand regarding the China Pakistan Economic Corridor CPEC the infrastructure project spearheaded by Beijing from 2015 that had reached an impasse due to disagreement over the border port in Balochistan what is the CPEC the CPEC one of the <coughs> one belt one road initiative obor largest in, in, investment was formerly formally launched by launched in 2015 during china chinese president xi jinping two day state visit to pakistan signing over 50 projects worth 45 billion dollar china set up the silk road fund to invest the invest in cpc project planned till 2030 the main project was to establish a corridor connecting pakistan's border port in baluchistan to china china's kasgar Khaz, in the southwestern jijian region the silk road fund which manages the investment is being financed by a consortium of chinese banks the project themselves are undertaken by various chinese firms in collaboration with pakistani companies apart from this corridor a number of power projects and several specific several special economic zones are to be developed under the cpc the cpc had teething 
troubles in 2016 as several projects ground to to a halt over confusion of on funding contractor selection delay in bidding process differences over tax exemption and obtaining of no objection certificates for example the gwadar court faced multiple issues starting with water supply the 11.2 billion rupees project to supply treat and distribute water to port by connecting the swad and sadikor dams was delayed as as the port authorities were unclear if the project funding was via a grant an interest free loan or a commercial loan from china other projects like the 600 megawatt gwadar coal fired power plant and the gwadar small port city master plan to run into issues over uncertainty about funding these projects are financed by commercial chinese loan and are insured by china export and credit insurance insurance corporation singur sinusur against non payment guaranteed by the pakistan government sinusur levies a 7% debt servicing free fee a yearly varying interest and financing free making the entire project a huge economic burden on the debt ridden nation several experts have argued that the high cost incurred in construction will diminish any gra- any gains from the increased power production <coughs> how have the local reacted to the project the biggest thorn in the cpc side in the intense project by the local chain baluchistan against the gwadar port city project fearing loss of local livelihood such as fishing and resisting the use of unskilled chinese labor instead of pakistan locals baluch resident have refused to sell land to the chinese for building the port moreover the gwadar port has has been leased to china overseas port holding companies company which means that beijing reaps 91% of profits while islamabad gains only 9% this has led to a rise <coughs> in anti china sentiments among the baluch locals complicating issues further the pakistan government has resorted to grabbing lands from locals forcing them to resettle elsewhere this has led to a rise in insurgency in baluchistan these militants groups have carried out several attacks on pakistan army officials providing protection to chinese workers <coughs> what is the rift between the china and pakistan china stopped funding these three road projects the 210 km dera ismail khan job road worth 81 billion rupees the 110 km khuzdar basima road worth 19.7 billion rupees and the 136 km karakoram highway worth 8.5 billion rupees over suspicious of suspicion of corruption china also complicated the gwadar port issue by insisting insisting on yuan as a legal tender in the region in a retaliatory move in may 2018 the pakistan national assembly standing committee ordered an inquiry into the china china overseas port holding company pakistan claiming that it had been operating without valid security clearance the port construction already slow due to local resistance virtually stalled in 2022 china refused to further expand cooperation with pakistan in the areas of energy water management and ch- climate change under cpec what next with the recent visit to beijing islamabad bad is attempting to restart funding for its key project while mr kokor and china chinese president xi jinping reviewed the progress of other projects the development of gwadar port itself remained unresolved <coughs> then is to why are the people fleeing myanmar for mizoram In a spillover of the civil war in Myanmar, more than 1,500 nationals of Indian neighboring country took refuge in Mizoram's Champai district early this Monday following a gunfight between the Myanmar army and pro-democracy militia in the country's western China, western Chin state abutting Mizoram. Reports indicate that the attacks on the ruling military junta 
और टाटमा डाओ इन्वॉल्विंग द चीन नेशनल आर्मी सी एन ए एंड द चीन डिफेंस फॉर डिफेंस फोर्स एमोंग अदर लेड टू द कैप्चर ऑफ टू बेसेस द माउी एंड रिखावा दर मिलिटरी मिलिटरी कैंप बाय द रेबल्स वट इज द सिचुएशन इन म्यांमार द अटैक इन चीन स्टेट को इंसिडेंशल को इंसिडेंटली फॉलोड ए मेजर कोऑर्डिनेटेड अटैक ऑन रिजिम फोर्स बाय थ्री एथनिक आर्म्ड ग्रुप्स द म्यांमार नेशनल डेमोक्रेटिक अलायंस आर्मी एम एन डी ए ए टांग नेशनल लिबरेशन आर्मी टी एन एल ए एंड द आराकान आर्मी ए ए इन म्यांमार नॉर्थ सान स्टेट एब्यूटिंग चाइना द कोऑर्डिनेटेड अटैक टर्म डू ऑपरेशन इन वन थाउजेंड सेवन वन थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी सेवन ऑन ऑक्टोबर ट्वेंटी सेवन बाय थ्री ब्रदरहुड एलियंस एज द थ्री ग्रुप्स कॉल्ड देयर कलेक्टिव लेड टू सीरियस सेटबैक्स फॉर द जुमता फोर्स इन सान स्टेट एंड ब्रॉड अबाउट ए सिक्वेंस ऑफ अदर रेबल अटैक्स इंक्लूडिंग दोज इन द चेन स्टेट कोर्स ऑफ मिलिटरी आउटपोस्ट एंड बेसेस वेर आइदर एबंडन बाय द जुमता Courts or were captured by the rebels, with the UN stating that 60,000 people in Shan State and 2 lakh overall in the country have been displaced following the current hostilities, taking the total number of civilian displacement to more than 2 million since the COP. What led the current civil war? In February 2021, a new junta, the State Administrative Session Council (SAC), dominated by the Myanmar Armed Forces, organized a military coup that ousted the Civilian National League for Democracy government and detained its leader Aung San Suu Kyi, among many other legislators and party. ऑफिशियल द जुनता सेड इट इज कैप्चर्ड पावर बिकॉज ऑफ इरेगुलरिटीज इन नवंबर 2020 इलेक्शंस इवन दो इंटरनेशनल ऑब्जर्वर्स कॉल्ड इलेक्शन फेयर द कोप लेड टू द कोलैप्स ऑफ द डेमोक्रेटिक फेज दैट ओपनड अप आफ्टर द 2008 कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन दिस कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अलाउड फॉर रिजर्विंग 25% ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट ऑफ म्यांमार फॉर सर्विंग मिलिटरी ऑफिसर्स एंड कंट्रोल ओवर होम border affairs and defense by the military thereby limiting the civilian power after the february 2021 coup there were nationwide protest and civil disobedience campaign leading to what was called the spring revolution members of the deposed nld and other elected ethnic law makers former formed a new political body called the committee Rep- committee representing pure dan dangsu lutwa or national parliament in burmese who is along with the other civil society actors ethnic party representatives and other later formed the national unity consultative council nucc a dialogue platform seeking the unite pro democratic forces the nucc agreed upon a federal democratic charter fdc that sought to form up with a future constitution and a political road map to a federal democratic country to be led by a national unity government that was announced in april 2021 a final publication of the fdc happened in march 2022 after incorporating ethnic demands of recognition and equality for non bamor minority identities the united states institute of peace argues that the resistance is now led by the most inclusive पॉलिटिकल क्वालेशन इन म्यांमार हिस्ट्री द जनता रिस्पोंडेड बाय वायोलेंटली क्रैकिंग डाउन द ऑन द लार्जली पीसफुल मूवमेंट लीडिंग टू द एन यू जी अनाउंसिंग द क्रिएशन ऑफ पीपुल्स डिफेंस फोर्सेस पी डी एफ एंड इन सेप्टेम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन गेव द कॉल फॉर द पी डी एफ एंड अदर रेबल्स टू अटैक द जनता लॉन्चिंग ए सिविल वार What has been the ethnic organization responses on to the COP? The ethnic armed actors, despite coming under severe attack over the years from the Tatma Dao, have managed to establish autonomous enclaves in their areas. With the Tatma Dao 
unable to defeat them entirely it signed a ceasefire with the groups that allowed them to retain arms and some at- autonomy in minority areas a situation that persists even today the ethnic armed groups response is to the insertion in assertion called by the nug have been varied a paper by paul vries in the asian survey journal last year pointed to the three divergent responses groups such as the karen karen national union kachin kachin independence organization chin chin national front and kareni kareni national progressive party rebels support the nug fighting the army with and helping forming anti cop militia they do so while rejecting a nug proposal for a single federal army under the unified nug command what happened after chin was targeted the junta junta's first punitive action against ethnic armed organization was targeted at those in chin state in october 2021 an initiative that failed but resulted in several refugees fleeing to mizoram and manipur in india while the new while new delhi passed a structure not to open camps to or provide assistance the mizoram government defied the union government's order to deport the refugees and allowed them to take shelter the mizo people regard those from the chin community as ethnic brethren the influx of refugees in manipur has heightened and heightened the ethnic conflict between the kokijo community and the majority mixes in the state the eight groups including the restoration council of san state rcss new mod new mon state party nmsp pao national liberation organization pnlo Initially joined the NUCC dialogue, but after the junta's crackdown, decided to retain their ceasefire status with the junta. The TNLA, Kokang, Bed, MN, BAA, and other northern groups in the Shan state, besides the Rakhine state West AA, used the post-COP situation to strengthen themselves without provoking the junta. However, the Brotherhood alliance between the MNDAA and the TNLA and its attacks on junta forces since late October has changed the equation suddenly, increasing increasing the number of battlefield for the junta and stretching it its thin. How has China reacted? Myanmar's closest ally, China, has leveraged over some of the northern ethnic armed forces that are now engaged against the junta. While Beijing has publicly called for a cessation in hostage hostiles exports ever, the Chinese are willing to tolerate the actions as the rebels have evinced evinced the interest in reinsing. Reining the illicit activities such as telecom scam centers in Kokang zone, the MNDAA announced that it is planning to attack Lauki Township in Kokang, which is controlled by junta-affiliated militia and is also host to many cyber crime commands. Commands. Compounds. These illicit centers have trapped thousands of Chinese nationals, besides many from Southeast Asia, forcing them to carry out inter- internet fraud, theft, and cyber crime activities targeting Chinese citizens and others. The next is limited peace, unlimited tensions. It took a broader crisis. that dragged on for years to finally bring india and china to table 30 years ago officials from both sides meeting in the aftermath of the samdorong to stand off that that strained relations thrashed out to what would be a historic first ever broad border agreement between the neighbors who had in the 1960 Fought a war signed in September 1993 during Prime Minister Narasimha Rao's visit to China. 
what's now known as the border peace and uh, tranquility agreement bpta or to give the give it its full name the agreement on the maintenance of peace and tranquility along the line of actual control in the Indi in the india china border areas for the first time so both sides legally commit to rest for respecting the status quo and uh, reduce the risk of an unmanned confrontation that are 30th anniversary of what was <laughs> In many ways, a historic development part without mention underline its contest legacy today for at least two decades of the BPTA and subsequent agreement that it paved the way for helped keep helped keep the peace on the largest under, on demarcated border in the world yet the limited nature of the agreement would also ironically push both countries into an infrastructure race ultimately leading to increasingly frequent incidents starting in 2013 culminating in the deadly clash at uh, galwan in july in june 2020 indeed the very first article of the bpta saw a commitment that neither sides side shall use or threaten to use force against other by any means and that pending an ulti ultimate solution to the boundary questions between the two countries the two sides shall strictly respect and observe the lines of actual control between the two sides both also committed that neither side shall overstep the lse and each side will keep the its military forces in the areas along the lse to a minimum level of compatible with the friendly and good neighbor neighborly relations between the two countries and would agree to reduce their military forces along the lse in conformity with the requirements of the principle of mutual and equal security to ceiling to be mutually agreed none of those commitments now appear valid with the ongoing crisis entering its fourth winter and more than 1 lakh troops from both sides deployed in forward areas close to lse ambiguities around lsc at the heart of the reason for the breakdown in border agreement and mechanism in the inherent ambiguity that surrounds the lsc and was built into the bpta the lsc problem was one that negotiators wrestled with as they thrashed out the bpta given india's long standing discomfort with the term first proposed by then chinese premier zhu Enlai in a letter to Jawaharlal Nehru on November 7, 1959, China China still claims this in 1959 LAC as the valid one. As former Foreign Secretary and Ambassador to China, Vijay Gokhale explains in his 2022 book after Tiananmen, China wanted to insert the term LAC of 7 November 1959 into the BPTA, which India refused. <coughs> The problem was sidestepped by the inserting the provision that both sides would clarify the LAC wherever required, which by implications meant that India did not share a common perception with China about that the so-called LAC of 7 November 1959. He reflected there is no. Again, saying that such a formulation did not conclusively reject the Chinese versions of LAC, but in the circumstances, the after alternative might have been a continued state of close confrontation all along the LAC at a time when India was battling Pakistan-sponsored terrorism in both Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir. Choices to choices had to be made, and that is what India did on one undeniable positive. of the bpta was it's paving the way for further agreement that helped keep the peace soon after the samdor samdorang chu starting with an agreement in 1996 on confidence building measures in which military field along the lsc which acknowledged the unsettled definitions <coughs> of the lsc in 1993 and said both sides need to on ultimately arrive at the common understanding of lsc both sides also appointed special representatives in 2003 and agreed on a three step process for a final settlement of the boundary the first step on political parameter and 
guiding principle was completed in 2005 negotiations for a framework then began but have never been completed as negotiations on the boundary stalled the mechanism designed to keep peace in pending a solution began to come under increasing stress the exchange of map of respective lac claims to clarify differing perception was never completed infrastructure development instead what did happen amid the continuing ambiguity over the lac was a push by both sides to bolster their claims through facts on the ground such as more infrastructure in forward areas and increasing frequency of patrol patrol of both sides that would be some pockets meet once a month were soon encountering each other weeks each other every week a receipt a receipt for tension say gokhale reflects a partial explanation for the lack of success in the reaching a mutually acceptable boundary sentiment settlements during the 20 years from 1992 to 2012 might lie in the 1993 and 1996 agreement themselves by making both sides more conscious of the importance of strengthening their physical presence in their in these areas the two agreement might have in in advantly created condition for the subsequent slowing down the boundary negotiations until the parties felt they were in a more comfortable position along the lac the result 30 years on a is a markedly different context along the china india border ended the commitment enshrined in a, in the very first article of the very first india china border agreement were blunted bluntly cast aside in the current crisis which began in april 2020 and china with china for reasons still unexplained mobilizing a large number of troops in in <coughs> multiple areas along the lacn on unilaterally appearing to enforce the its lac of 1959 while military commanders of both sides continue to meet the work out a new set of cbm in this new context this parallel process of setting the boundary dispute has all but was the 22nd round that was held between national security advisor ozi jubal and chinese special representatives wang wi in december 2019 they have not met since 30 years on the india china border remains as on settled as ever as it does the border relationship it took a crisis three decades ago to bring both sides to the bpta whether the current crisis will bring another transformative moment in the relation remain to be seen the next article is dell hp foxconn get note under it hardware pli 2.0 Dell, HP, Flextronic, and Foxconn are among the 27 firms to get noted under the new IT hardware production linked incentive (PLI) scheme. The scheme extends to eligible companies for six years and average incentive above of about 5% on the net incremental sales over base years of the goods covered under the target segment and made in India. The best part is 23 of the of these companies are ready to start manufacturing from day zero, and the other four will begin production within the next 90 days. Oshini Vaisnav, Minister of Communication, Electronics, and IT, said this will lead to an in investment of about three three thousand crore rupees, additional production of about three point five lakh crore units, and a direct employment for about for some fifty thousand and indi indirect jobs for one point five lakh total two lakh employees. The best part is. Value chain is shifting to India, and that is, that is most important. Already we are around 105 billion dollar worth in electronics manufacturing, and moving rapidly to towards the 300 billion dollar in the coming few years. नेक्स्ट का है आर्टिकल जो फॉर्मर रिजर्व बैंक ऑफ इंडिया गवर्नर एस वेंकटेश रमन ऑन पासेस वे एट 92 
Former Governor of the Reserve Bank of India S. Venkata Raman 92 passed away at a private hospital in Chennai on Saturday. Following age related complications, he is survived by two daughters, including former Chief Secretary of Tamil Nadu Girija Bhaidanathan, born on January 28, 1931, in Thirun, Thirumayam of Pudukatai. District Bhankata Raman obtained a postgraduate degree in physics from University College. Physics from University College Thirunandapuram after he joined the Indian Administrative Service IAS in 1953. He also received a postgraduate degree in management from the Carnegie Mellon University in the US in 1968, belonging to the Tamil Nadu cadre of IAS Venkata Raman was appointed RBI governor in December 1990 when a balance of payment crisis was brew brewing in the economic critical juncture. Venkata Raman was governor of RBI at a critical time when the country faced a most severe balance of payment problem recalled C. Rangarajan who served the, in the RBI as a deputy governor during Venkata Raman's time at the helm and subsequently succeeded him as governor in December 1992. This was the time when there were quick changes in the central government. The responsibility of the Reserve Bank of India in that context became even more critical, he added. He paid the situation with great determination and courage. We had to raise the necessary resources to bridge the gap. We took the extraordinary step of shipping gold out of India and to raise the foreign exchange, Dr. Rangarajan observed Venkata Raman's tapped all his friends in various international financial institutions to raise the, raise the needed foreign exchange. He recalled leadership in crisis. Yaga Venugopal Reddy, a former RBI governor who served in the Union Finance Ministry in the early 1990s and had worked closely with Venkata Raman during the balance of payment crisis, recalled him with a great admira admiration. I am great admirer, admirer of Venkata Raman. His dedication to the nation was evident in his determination not to allow any default observed. Dr. Reddy, if there is one person who showed extraordinary leadership in resolving the balance of payment crisis, it is Venkata Raman who was the then governor of the RBI. It was the country's good fortune. He added his two-year-long tenure at the helm of the Central Bank of Bank also coincided with the multi-core securities come amid the opportunity of opposition's persistent Demand for his resignation, the then Union Finance Minister Manmohan Singh in July 1992 gave a clean sheet in Parliament to Venkata Raman, saying he had performed his duty in a manner worthy of his office. Dr. Rangarajan also cited Venkata Raman's contribution to economic reforms. Venkata Raman was also a reformer. He is initiated the banking sector reforms. He made the initial change in the Exchange rate management system by moving towards a dual exchange rate regime. He was a courageous person who took the right decision at the right time. The nation is deeply indebted to him, he added. His term also saw India adopt the IMF stabilization program where the rupee underwent a devaluation and a launch of the program of economic economic reforms the RBI said on its website about Venkata Raman's tenure as governor finance secretary in his long term long in his long administrative career Venkata Raman occupied various post positions both in Tamil Nadu government and the union center he had a distinction of holding the post of finance secretary in the state as well as in the union government in march 1969 a month after m m karunanidhi became chief minister he was made finance ministry ministry finance secretary and held the post till june 1974 11 years later february 1985 he became finance secretary in union government and served there for four years earlier in his service between the end of 1962 and 1966 he served as a private secretary to the union minister c subramaniam and was a member of the team that oversaw the implementation <coughs> of the green revolution program file in the state government service he also 
हेल्ड द पोस्ट ऑफ वाइस चेयरमैन एंड प्रेसिडेंट सदन सदन पेट्रोकेमिकल इंडस्ट्री कॉर्पोरेशन एंड ड्यूरिंग नाइनटीन सेवेंटी सेवन टू एट्टी थ्री ह्यूमन मेनो टेकिंग वेंकटरमन से स्ट्रिंग एज ए तमिलनाडु से फाइनेंस सेक्रेटरी इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी सेक्रेटरी इन द यूनियन गवर्नमेंट एस कृष्णन हु सर्व एज द फाइनेंस सेक्रेटरी इन इन द स्टेट बिटवीन द जून टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन एंड नवंबर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन काउंटेड एन अबाउट वेंकटरमन हुई एक्स एग्जाम्प्लीफाइड हिज कीस to resolve issues and problem of in human manner when the finance department refused to entertain the request of the family of a government employee who died immediately after the launch of the family benefit scheme of the ground that an amount of 5 5 rupees was not deducted monthly from the employee's salary mekataraman was said to have paid 5 rupees to the file mr krishnan and recounted <laughs> Recalling his senior from the cadder as a very innovative and positive person, R. Purni Lingam, who belongs to the 1917 batch of Tamil Nadu cadder of the IS, said, "Mekata Raman was credited with many schemes in the state, including introduction of computerization of government." Computerization of government accounts in 1974. Bankataraman also served for a brief stint as advisor on economic affairs at the Prime Minister's office when Rajiv Gandhi was the PM in May 1989. He was deputed to Karnataka as an advisor to the governor at the time when the state was under president's rule. So, friends, this is all for today. and we will meet from tomorrow onwards with new news articles from the hindu newspaper so thank you